Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, a subject I think many Americans are down to get behind. Don't buy a Tesla Powerwall, instead buy a truck. Now a portion of this video is sponsored by Auto Tempest. We'll get more into that later, but know that if you're in the market to buy a car, autotempest.com is a great place to start. So in this video, I want to compare the Ford F-150 Lightning, which can serve as a backup power source for your home. I believe it's the first electric vehicle uh, to offer this in the United States. And we're gonna compare that versus the Tesla Powerwall, which is of course another way that you could have a backup power source for your home. So first, let's just look at price. The F-150 Lightning Pro starts at $41,669 versus a Tesla Powerwall. If you buy them in multiples, they're $7,500 each. So if you just buy one, it's a bit over $10,000, but if you're buying several of them, you can get them for $7,500 each. Okay, so how much energy do we have stored in each of these? So the F-150 Lightning Pro has a 98 Eight kilowatt hour battery and the Tesla power walls are 14 kilowatt hours 13.5 uh, of which you can use for backup power energy now this of course leads to an interesting comparison so how many power walls do we need to have the equivalent capacity of a Ford F-150 Lightning Pro well that would be 98 divided by 14 that gives us seven power walls how much do seven power walls cost well multiply it by 7500 $52,500 so just the battery storage capacity alone in power walls is more expensive than buying a whole truck that is also holding that much battery that you could use to back up your home. Now, I don't have incentives included in these prices. Um, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to use the prices that the manufacturers set uh, because incentives can depend on your situation. So we're just going to use manufacturer set prices. Now, I'm not saying that everyone is gonna go and buy seven power walls for their home, but if they were, they'd be absolutely crazy to do so when you could have an entire truck uh, for less money that's also a truck. Um, and so the interesting thing about just how well-priced this F-150 Pro is, which consumers can buy, uh, is if you look at the next battery size up, so they do have an extended battery pack, which gives you 131 kilowatt hours, and they only offer that in the Pro version for fleet customers, so if you're a rent consumer out there and you want to buy an F-150 with the 131 kilowatt hour battery pack, the price tag is, wow, $74,169. So going for the extended version, uh, not exactly going to save you any money out there. So that seems silly, but it shows just how well priced this F-150 Pro is. And keep in mind, like this is a very useful truck. It has all wheel drive. It has 775 pound feet of torque. It's a very capable truck in its base trim. So the wild thing to me here is how many kilowatt hours you get for the dollar spent. So I plotted the cost per kilowatt hour of every electric vehicle that's on sale today. I did exclude some of the more expensive ones that didn't make any sense to put into this comparison. Uh, but looking at the vast majority of the electric cars out there sold today, the Ford F-150 Lightning Pro is all by itself in the cost per kilowatt hour at about $425 per kilowatt hour of that battery pack. So, you know, the closest next thing is the Chevy Bolt. And, you know, this is significantly uh, more vehicle than the Chevy Bolt. So it's pretty wild, the price point here. I'm not exactly sure how Ford's doing that, but they're in their own league as far as pricing is concerned. So let's touch on the advantages of going either route. So if you go with the F-150, well, you get a truck included. Like, that's pretty cool, right? You can do all the truck things with a truck. Uh, you have that huge cost per kilowatt hour advantage. You can drive to recharge it. Say, you know, there's a power outage, it lasts two days. You can drive your truck to a charging station, assuming that charging station still has power, recharge, bring your truck back, and then keep powering your home. You, of course, don't have that option with a Tesla power. Powerwall. Uh, your output for this system from the truck to your house is 9.6 kilowatts. That's pretty good, pretty high amount of power draw. Uh, and you can go days without power. So as far as calculating how much, we'll get into that in a moment, but starting with our advantages of our Powerwall, uh, it's modular. You don't have to buy seven of these things, right? You could just buy three. Now the disadvantage there is if you're just buying three, you're gonna be spending about 25 grand. Uh, you're getting pretty close to this price and you don't have that much time 
time that you actually back up your home um, when you start getting into the math behind it. I think the huge advantage with the Tesla Powerwall is the more of them you get, you can exceed that 9.6 kilowatt uh, that the Ford F-150 is limited. So if you're running all kinds of electric appliances within your home, like a bunch, then you can do that if you have several power walls, whereas you may be limited in what you can run with the F-150. So how much time will this F-150 with a 98 kilowatt hour battery pack last you in a power outage? Well, look at your own power bill. Uh, I looked at mine. I use about 20 kilowatt hours per day, uh, and that includes charging my Tesla. So that is uh, including, you know, having an electric car that you can drive around in. Uh, and so I, if you have a 98 kilowatt hour battery pack, you divide that by 20, that gives you about five days. Now, let's just call it three days and consider that we were going to have some inefficiencies with this system of sending power back into your home and also leaving you a buffer to drive around so that you can still take that truck perhaps to a charger uh, that is nearby or if you need to get groceries, things like that. You still wanna have some usable energy to drive. So for me, it would be a good three days of doing everything like normal in my home. That's pretty cool. Of course, if I was looking at Tesla power walls, I would need at least two power walls just to last one day. Now, there are some things to note about Ford's solution here. There are certain requirements in order to have this uh, Ford Lightning actually be the backup source for your home. So first of all, you have to have a 320 amp service. Uh, that is pretty high. So it might mean a lot of people are gonna have to upgrade their electrical uh, service box uh, to a 320 amp service versus a 200. So kind of a bummer to see. I wish they would offer it with a 200 amp. Though, because this is an 80 amp charger, which is also required, if you think about that on a 200 amp, system that's already using half of your total input uh, to go towards just charging this truck. So that charger is required, uh, though it does come included with the extended battery. So if you happen to spend $74,000 on an electric truck, wow, Ford will throw in that uh, charger for free. What a deal. For the other people you're going to have to buy, if you're just getting this pro, you're going to have to buy that charger separately. You also have to buy a home integration system so you can connect all this to your home setup and make it work with your local grid uh, and then you're also going to have to pay for installation which is handled by Sunrun uh, assuming you're not going to DIY this. So it's not as simple as you just buy a Ford truck and it works. Now, I do think there are some good reasons to buy a Tesla Powerwall, and I think that makes sense in the case of using Tesla Solar. So if you have Tesla Solar panels stuck up on your roof uh, and you're driving to work and your solar panels are producing all this excess energy during the day while it's sunny and nice and you're not at home, well, then it makes sense to have somewhere where you can store that energy. So in that case, to me, it makes sense to have a Powerwall. Uh, this gives you energy independence. I think the idea of Tesla Solar is really cool. Uh, solar panels in general, very cool. Uh, and the big advantage Tesla has is their price versus everybody else. It just seems like from a pricing standpoint, Tesla comes in well below everybody else on total system cost for getting a solar uh, system set up on your home. Now, the disadvantages, I've actually looked into getting Tesla solar for my house. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, the problem is a lot of people complain about the service. Uh, it's kind of the same story with their cars, unfortunately. So a lot of people have had real struggles with their service, and that's kind of held me back. Also, it's location dependent. You know, not everyone has uh, tons of sun all year round. Uh, and then also it is expensive. I mean, if you're looking at putting in one of these systems, it's probably going to be in the thirty dollars to $50,000 range. Again, before incentives, incentives can bring that down dramatically. Uh, but it is an expensive solution. A couple other things worth pointing out. Uh, you can buy solar with or without the power wall. So in the case that, hey, you're away from home and you're making excess energy, depending on where you live, you could be selling that energy back to the grid on making money off your solar panels. So that is one thing that could happen. Uh, another thing to note is that you can buy this power wall separately, uh, Tesla says, through a licensed Tesla installer. All right, so let's be realistic for a moment. These are expensive solutions, right? 30 to 50 grand for a solar system, uh, you know, 40 grand for a truck, could be, you know, 20 some grand, get a power wall set up. So realistically, hey, I just want a cheap solution for my home that gives me backup power. What should I do? Well, then I looked at generators. You know, you can get a whole home generator uh, installed that's making, you know, 10 to 20 kilowatts power for your home uh, in, the, in the five to $10,000 range. And you know, if you're running off the city's supplied natural gas, that thing just runs as long as you need it, right? Uh, or you can do propane if you want to be self-sufficient. 
So the question I had, and I'm sure it's not a question that many people had, uh, but I was curious, like, what are the actual emissions from a home generator? And I thought, you know, if this is just something that turns on, you know, once every year for a few days, how much uh, emissions could it possibly produce? Um, I was surprised actually how, how bad they are. They use quite a bit of fuel. I was pretty shocked to see that. Um, and, and it kind of makes sense once you run the math, uh, but essentially these things are burning, you know, one to three gallons an hour in that range depending on you know half load full load if you're running in a 10 to 20 kilowatt uh, generator again pricing on this is going to be in the five to ten thousand dollar range so let's just say two gallons an hour for 24 hours a day for seven days let's say we lost power for a week what are our emissions for that week that we lost power uh, we're running propane two gallons an hour 24 hours a day seven days a week there are five 0.72 kilograms of CO2 per gallon burned, which gives us about two tons, uh, two metric tons, I know the units are messier, two metric tons of carbon dioxide per week uh, running this generator. So to give you some context for that, uh, Volvo recently published a very cool study looking at the environmental impact of building their own cars. Uh, and they said to produce the Volvo XC40 recharge, which is about a 78 kilowatt hour uh, electric car, it's 26 tons of CO2 to produce. Now seven tons of that are for creating that battery. So if you think about this, if you have a generator that's producing two tons of CO2 uh, per week, then in four weeks, you've already created more emissions than creating a massive nearly 80 kilowatt hour battery uh, of running that backup. So I was actually pretty surprised how much emissions, how much fuel these backup generators, home generators actually use. And I started thinking about it and I was like, does this math actually check out? If you look at a car, a car that's just sitting there idling uses about a third to a half of a gallon per hour. And you know, that's just an engine trying to keep itself running and a few onboard electronics, right? That's how much fuel it's using. And you know, gasoline is more energy dense than propane. Uh, and so, you know, one to three gallons an hour for something that's powering your home, all the electronics, all the things going on, uh, it started to actually check out. So yeah, generators use a ton of fuel create a ton of emissions if you're actually running them for a long period of time. If it's once a year, you know, it's not going to be a huge deal uh, if it's just a day. But if you're running these for extended periods of time, yeah, like fairly quickly, uh, they can offset a full, you know, massive car battery. So that's pretty wild. Now, for anyone who's left listening and they're thinking to themselves, but I want a cheap solution that isn't gonna destroy the planet. Well, you're actually in luck, hopefully in the near future. So there are companies like Wallbox that are creating chargers that operate both directions. So you can use this charger to charge up your electric car, and then you can use your electric car to power your home, vehicle to home. And these chargers are about $4,000, and then you also need to have an electric car. Now, I did a search on autotempest.com, and you can search for any car here, which brings together the listings from all the major used car sites. I did a search for electric cars, and as you can see, there are options in the $5,000 to $6,000 range for a used Nissan Leaf and with surprisingly low miles. Even a Ford Focus Electric. I forgot about that thing. Anyways, if you're in the market to buy a car, autotempest.com is genuinely the first place I start searching because it compiles so many results. So hopefully in the near future, we have you know multiple EVs out there, many EVs that are compatible with these types of chargers. And it's not this thing where we have to have all this you know complicated mess to dig through in order to figure out, hey, I just wanna back up my home and I have all this energy sitting in my electric car. Hopefully we have real solutions for that in the near future. It's very cool to me to have have something that serves a dual purpose. So having an electric car that can back up your home rather than having to invest in a generator or you know a giant battery pack, uh, using something that you already have, I think that's very cool. The other main point of this video is just that the F-150 Lightning Pro is an amazing deal. And it's a truck. I, I don't quite understand how Ford's able to sell it at this price. And so I feel like it might be very difficult to acquire these trucks at this price uh, or that price is going to change. But either way, at the current time, especially looking at cost per kilowatt hour, these Ford F-150 Lightning Pros are an incredible deal. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.